All right. Michael Turner, complete sketchbook collection. Let's take a peek at this. Making you all nervous with my coffee over here. Let's get this out of the way. All right, so um, essentially there is the complete collection sketchbook. It is a hardcover and it's a compilation. Uh, these are all three books that I had bought individually from uh, Frank Mastermoto at different conventions. I think the first one I got was right here. It might have been at the uh, Amazing Arizona convention way back in the day. Um, this one also is a little bit older. Um, these might be more affordable. I'm not sure. I haven't done a, a eBay search or whatnot. Like that's really the only place you're gonna find these. Um, the first one here was called Michael Turner Sketchbook Aspen: The Early Years, and then it has a number uh, one right here, square bound book. Don't know the page count. Uh, full of goodness. So there's book one. Uh, book two was called uh, Aspen: The Heroic Years. Got a number two showing it's book two. Book three, uh, Aspen, The Marvelous Years. Pun intended. Did a bunch of work over at Marvel, which is in here. Uh, book three. So you got th those three books uh, combined form the complete sketchbook collection right there. Uh, so we'll take a peek at this. I don't know if they got an MSRP on here. Um, you haven't seen one of these in, in quite a while. Uh, apologies if I'm turning you on to a book that is crazy expensive. I know that my hardcover uh, Battle Chasers book, which I got from Amazon, is uh, about six times the price of what it usually would run retail. So, anyways, this might be the same case. All right, um, I think, let's see, I zoomed in here. Okay. Sorry for any glare. The, the interior pages should be fine. This is a, it's a high-gloss hardcover. Um... As usual, Aspen, very nice design. Uh, convention exclusive of 1,000. I don't know if that means that there's another edition of this that's not specifically for uh, being Road Warriors and selling this at shows. Yeah, there's no pricing on here. Okay, so you get a little bit, little note about the artist. Uh, if you're not familiar with Michael Turner's work, <clears throat> uh, Michael Turner has passed away. Uh, however, has left a uh, incredible volume of uh, inspiring artworks and reference for us artists who are inspired by art styles such as his own. So, yeah, I'll get to this. Uh, okay, so we got the uh, interior page here, sketchbook, complete collection. Um, little <laughs> little illustration of a uh, seahorse there. All right, so, and I'm pretty sure that it does follow the... Um, the smaller uh, square bound Aspen books. Um, so you can see it's pretty thick volume. It's got a few hundred pages in here. Um, July 2016. Okay, so I must have gotten this up in Seattle maybe 2017. Maybe 2016. I'm not entirely sure. So yeah, I'll just start flipping pages here. Uh, pages here from... Let's see. We, oh, you know what? This was a connecting cover set. So you got uh, Fathom Universe characters here. You get to see his layouts, prelims right here. Uh, yeah, you got the Fathom characters, Soulfire, and then the Ecos characters here. Uh, this was a connecting cover set. I think it was for the previews, or it might be a variant for uh, comic book conventions. I forget these things. I have so much Turner art that I, it all just sort of blends together at some point. Um, this was a very cool uh, cover. I don't recall what it was on. It might have been for uh, an anthology of some sort or just the Ecos book, but yeah, this is the uh, character here, and I really like this design a lot. So yeah, this is most most of this here are, are IPs uh, owned by uh, MLT, uh, still being published. Uh, over at MLT Aspen, uh, Frank Mastermoto is, uh, I believe, lead writer and slash publisher over there right now. So yeah, lots of cool stuff. You get you get to see some prelims, um, pinup stuff. Some of these are inset. I feel like this is a commission piece that I had seen. 
Um, yeah, so basically stuff related to these properties. So that's a thick book, and I want to keep this under an hour, so I'll just start flipping. Uh, double page spread. This was from uh, Fathom. Let's see if it says here. Issue one, page... It's really bizarre, five and six. That doesn't really make sense to me because uh, your even number page for a double, this would be like six, seven. That's really strange that it says five and six up here. Like right there, not lying, it says five and six. <laughs> yeah, double page spreads, guys. Uh, page one, if you're gonna flip it, it would go two, three, all right? So uh, even numbers always on the left. It's the only way that they get printed on the left, even numbered. Uh, yeah, lots of designs here, lots of thumbnails, thumbnail designs, character designs. Um, this stuff is fun. I can get lost with this book. I can just uh, look through this book all day. So as soon as I'm done with this, it's going under my desk so I can actually get some work done. Uh, these are pencils actually used. Uh, uh, the, way, the way that Turner and uh, his colorist, Peter Stegerwald, would work is they would literally just scan these. These are all uninked pencil uh, covers. Uh, they scan this, um, do possibly a little bit of cleanup work. I'm not sure how much. Um, but he's a very tight penciler, uh, as I am myself. Uh, a lot of my Reg Tality stuff, my 94 stuff, is exactly the same method. Type pencils, scan it, send it to the flatter, get it back, render it up, good to go, send it to the letter. Uh, same difference here. So, yeah, he's got a very tight, controlled line. He approaches it, not as a sketch. So, and he works out most of the dynamics and all that within this thumbnail. Um, I don't know how he worked. I don't know if he would blow stuff up. Um, I'm assuming he probably did. Probably had some sort of a, a blow up light box method where you would just take this layout, um, you'd blow it up onto an 11 by 17 piece of like typing paper, essentially just a throw away, and then you would light box it uh, lightly or in blue line or red or whatever you want to use to the board before you start doing the final rendering, which is what you see right here. So kind of an old school method, a little, little different uh, nowadays digitally. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a Mike Turner piece illustrated digitally. So um, this was a double page splash right here. I would have preferred this large, but man, this is like an insane amount of information going on here. That was also a double page splash. Pretty happy with my zoom here. I got it pretty much where you're able to see everything going on here. Um, yeah, just crazy cool. Cool design, uh, very energetic. Lots of energy going on with the underdrawings. Uh, anatomy, always believable, always fun. Even when it was not accurate, always fun. So yeah, you got a fathom piece there. You got more soul fire going on right here. I will be skipping a few pages here just because they're not adult or anything. I just would prefer to get through this, like I said, in less than an hour. Um, let's see. Some of these were covers. I'm not sure. Some of these might be trading cards as well. Um, there were trading card sets, or were Fathom sets, uh, foil metal cards, um, foil stamped cards. Uh, some of this might be from that. There were also mini series that I did not collect, and I think that some of these might be covers, like this for sure. Um, this piece almost looks like a Talent Caldwell piece, but it's Turner. Um... You know, maybe they work together. Like, this was a jam piece. Like, that was a Turner face. This looks like a talent-drawn piece right here. So, it's really interesting, too. All right, so more Aspen. Such a nice cover. It's awesome. Awesome design. Uh, kind of a, almost a Frazetta thing. He did, you get the cluster in the center, and, it, and you kind of work that reverse... Uh, 
that whirlwind effect and then you get the larger um, elements around it in the negative space that create shapes of their own. Yeah, Turner, Turner. Uh, that's one thing. I, for me personally, I, I think he had surpassed Silvestri in the realm of um, drawing uh, very attractive, very attractive females. I know with myself, I always had an issue drawing. Um, uh, f females with very uh, feminine features, I would focus so much on drawing uh, the male anatomy and, you know, everyone's juiced out, veins popping out of the neck, stuff like that, where when it became time to have to draw a woman in my comics, uh, they always had a little bit of, like, the chiseled jaw, you know, masculine kind of look to them. Um, and uh, Turner... Turner was one of them who really showed um, you can use a lot of uh, popular line line weight uh, like a skill set right uh, very popular lines that were being used by you know Wildstorm, Top Cal, Extreme pretty much Image Comics and then all the emulators over at DC and Marvel who were on the uh, coattails of Image Comics in the 90s um but a deli he had a delicacy about it, you know. He could he could come in and draw, uh, very recognizable. The silhouette is very readable, and the uh, the line weights within here. Um, big credit on those. Uh, th this kind of line weight here, you don't see this in a lot of pencilers. They leave it for the inker to kind of come in and uh, flesh that out for them, you know. And. Uh, not not Turner. That's why this stuff was was so. Uh, it was just ready for for just getting scanned and going straight to print. Like this right here, almost you know you can almost argue that oh that looks like it might be ink. No, it's not ink. See, this is just pencils, a uh, little bit of levels, uh, correction, and um, good to go. You know, and I do like a lot of the sketchy stuff. They would kind of leave in some of the underdrawing design work uh, of Turner's was always super fun to see that too. Yeah, I'm always on the fence. So so I don't mind owning uh, two copies of everything <laughs> that he's done. I do like having the, uh, the line art, the black and white stuff, and then also the full color work as well. Uh, just because the colors give it such a, an interesting bump, you know. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a Turner piece uh, colorized where the colors like ruin the piece. Um, that is something that can happen pretty easily. The wrong colorist can like destroy an artist's work, um, but fortunately, he's had uh, uh, his entire career was full of just A-list uh, colorists and inkers and so forth to just help propel him to the top it's a very cool design I like that one right there too yep so right here we're still in the uh days of aspen uh that was that big reveal uh what was it soul fire five or six it's a cool cover too yep all right so uh the page flip here we go so uh aspen 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 uh michael turner's company he created Establish MLT Productions, Aspen, whatever. Page flip, boom, here's some DC work. Uh, I've always, this piece is awesome. This has always been a favorite of mine, uh, this Starfire piece here. So yeah, uh, he did a bunch of stuff at DC. A uh, bunch of covers, a bunch of variants, a bunch of pinups, trading cards. Oh, mini series. He did an entire year. Uh, he did a whole year, uh, I think, covers on Superman. And these were all very, very interesting. Uh, covers by Turner, Mike Turner. And I think the interiors were Talent Caldwell. Uh, to be quite honest, I bought all these books when they were coming out. And I looked through them once. But because it wasn't Turner uh, Turner Guts, I bagged them, boarded them, and they went, they went away in the darkness. You know, they went into my collection, so... 
Um, yeah, these are super cool designs here. Um, I like seeing all these prelims. Um, <laughs> it's funny, they're, they're, like, they're almost similar, almost the same thing. Yeah, sometimes the first, the first, uh, your your intuition is going to tell you what you should have done the first time. You know, follow the gut. Follow the guts. Yeah, this was a cool cover. Um, I think they did something weird with the coloring on this piece, though. I don't remember. Uh, let's see. This was a jam. I think these were jam pieces. Um, these two Supergirls here. I think there were two variants. There was one with Jim Lee drew Superman and he was uh, cut and pasted here. And then the other one, I think, uh, was a collaboration possibly with Ian Churchill, who was drawing the comic at that time. Um, he might have drawn another character that was superimposed here. I think I had this cover. And I think it was a Superman drawn by Jim Lee. Um, so yeah, it looks like he retained his originals and they just did a Photoshop thing where, you know, they cut and paste and, and uh, their artwork together and mash it. Has a cool cover too. So yeah, uh, lots of Superman, Superman stuff, Batman stuff, Justice League, uh, Flash. Yeah, I forgot about these. I always forget about these here. Um, yep, lots of sketches, some commission work. That was always a nice piece there. Uh, and on the original, the printed piece of this, you actually lose all the contour line weights that he put here because I think they just uh, paint bucketed black behind Wonder Woman on that specific piece right there. All right, let's get through this. Um, Justice League, yeah, I got this cover here. I don't recall uh, this piece right here. It was a cover, but I don't remember which book like I said I was buying them uh, Red Tornado so awesome um, yeah such a good piece I love this all this kinetic these kinetic lines through here man wow see this is what I'm talking so, so when I'm showing you guys this stuff this is the stuff that makes me want to draw and hopefully you find a little bit of inspiration uh, through these materials on these little videos I do um yeah, I think this here was a cover to, I know it was printed later on, like currently, but this was a cover to a sketchbook. Uh, Turner used to do these little Ashcan sketchbooks, and um, I'm pretty sure this was a cover to one of those. They were old school, you know, where they printed on the orange and red paper, and limited, uh, through different conventions. Um, they probably run about 100 bucks. 60 to 100 right now i'm sure they i think they were 20 dollars at the time of purchase but you would have had to have been there mid 2000s uh so cool um i know the guy that owns this original this is an 1117 drawing right here um i've seen it in his house framed and matted so very cool that they included that all right so get some other stuff get some gi joe covers in here it's a very cool dynamic shot of uh, Storm Shadow and Snake Eyes there. Um, Short-lived series, I, I always I always wish that they had uh, finished it the original way intended. Uh, Heroes. This, these were, um, I think, for the graphic novel, the graphic novel stuff. Um, I'm not quite sure the origins of these. Um, I've heard a few things, but I, I don't recall it. It's been years since even talking about it. Uh, Beyonce, yeah. Really weird. Uh, these were covers for a series. I don't re recall the name. And there's no information, by the way. There's no info within here unless it's written on the originals at the top, which it's not. Um, but yeah, these were super cool designs. Um, yeah, I got this book. It's a Red Sonya variant. Uh, this was a Wildstorm Spotlight. I got this book too. Uh, he doesn't do anything on the interiors, but he did that awesome cover. I uh, got some other pieces here. You got a, a Vampirella. Um, 
Battlestar, Battlestar Galactica. Uh, this piece here, uh, he did for my old roommate, Pat Lee, um, for when Pat Lee was doing the, oh, geez, Devil May Cry. This was a double page uh, pullout poster, I believe, in Devil May Cry number one. I have, a, I have a convention exclusive of it, and this was on the insides. Uh, the colors on this, though, were... Uh, what's that studio called? Udon. Udon colored it. So this is a very cool piece. I wish they made this one really big. Uh, the, liner, the, the pencils to this are really strong. Really, really nice piece. Uh, covers to Red Sonja Spidey, the crossover. Uh, also, cool designs. Um, there's a Venom cover he did that was really open. Yeah, this one here, so there, this cover was carried by Peter with with the uh, the coloring. Uh, you can see Turner knows how to draw Venom really well. Um, but I know this piece here, he left it really, really open, and a lot of the lighting and the shading was, was uh, created in the coloring process uh, by Steerwald. So, um, yeah, this cover always was kind of odd to me. Um, the liner, it looks, it looks cool. Uh, I do wish, however, that he had approached it like this and dropped those heavy black shadows and, uh, you know, some feathering, like something in there. Um, well, that's cool. That's an awesome mouth. That's so cool. All right. And then you get the uh, the Civil War series. Uh, Turner did a ton of covers for these. Uh, you can see the cover he did. So Namor. I think this was Fantastic Four, though. There's a Thor, uh, Iron Spider... Um, I think these were both Civil War books. I'm not sure about this one either. But anyways, yeah, these are all published cover works. I got all those books. I just, I didn't read them. I ended up waiting for trades. Um, I don't remember what book this was on. Definitely X-Men characters. I don't recall the, the issue, though. Uh, some of the, oh, these ones were weird. Um... So these ones, I don't know if he drew them as 11, 17 sideways or just drew them in a shorter area. Um, essentially what they did with these here, these were kind of panoramic shot. So on the comic, they were printed uh, edge to edge, but you ended up with this giant black area on the top and the bottom. And so you had logo and logo. And uh, I just felt like uh, less logo, more art, guys. Give me more artwork. It's a very cool um, Aurora right there. Yeah, so more covers. Daredevil, you get Surfer. Uh, this this right here was his variant for the Ultimates comic. Uh, the series that was started by uh, Joe Mad and then uh, completed... I think it was completed by Finch. But yeah, Joe Madera... Uh, issue one i think and then this is the variant one of the variants to it very rich coloring so it's a little difficult uh to see the lines on that that issue uh old man logan this is a cool cover uh wolverine cool cover hulk i think this might have been a planet hulk variant um this cover right here man that's yeah, this cover was the shit. Like, when I saw this this piece here, and I know they did different renditions. They did, like, a, a Red Hulk, a gray, and then the green. Um, it doesn't matter what colors that Peter used. It was just a really cool, really cool cover. Um, the rendering on this piece, uh, top-notch. Top-notch Turner. Uh, you get a Weapon X piece here. Let's see, we got Miss Marvel. This was a variant as well. Um, I think... Might be wrong. Um, I think this was Frank Cho's Miss Marvel comics, and this was a variant to it, I believe. Uh, X Men 500, uh, giant collage, tons of characters in there. Um, Onslaught. This was a cover. This is the cover I grabbed of, of uh, the Onslaught book back in the day. My uh, youngest son was collecting it way back. Um, let's see. This was a variant. Might have, this might have actually been a regular cover. Um, I don't recall the book. It, Cable or Ultimate X-Men or something like that. Death of Captain America series. <clears throat> he did several covers. Um, of the All of these, I think that I only own this one and this one. Uh, 
This one, I think the interior artwork was Linnell U, and then this one here, I feel like maybe it was a Dave Finch interior, and that's why I bought it. Uh, some of these other ones, they had like McNiven and uh, maybe Scross. I'm not sure, but anyways, yeah, I I do not I did not buy these these three here when they came out. Um, I'd usually crack the book and see, make sure the interiors were worth it. Yeah, this is all great stuff. All right, so, yeah, more Marvel variants. And obviously, this material here is from this book, The Marvelous Years, the pun, Marvel. So, The Marvelous Years. Um, I have not done a comparison, though, to see if there was any um, information omitted from the single issues that make up this uh, hardcover collection or not. This is such a nice cover, too. I really like this hand. <laughs> I like the force perspective of that. And you can see they didn't really hide it either. You can see some of the smudge and the race and re redraw here uh, going on with the uh, uh, Bendy, Mr. Fantastic, and then also with Sue. Um, I'm going to assume that this file they used for this is probably the same file that went straight to color. So um, coloring is going to hide a little bit of that. You know, if there's a little bit of smudge or some gray... Um, smearing it, it kind of blends in with the coloring you know uh, depending on the hues that you're using hues and values and then uh, yeah then he rounds it up with um, these are from the fathom zero I think these are actual pages used in the Fathom, either the one half or the zero. Uh, this book was available through Wizard Magazine. Um, let's see here. And uh, this, I don't remember. This might have been a trading card. This might be from a book too, though. Um, sketchbook section, I remember that. That was in the zero issue. Um, cool cover piece. I don't recall what it, what it was from. A fathom spinoff of some sort. <clears throat> uh, this turnaround here, I'm gonna assume that this was created for the action figure um, before Y2K, I would say, maybe. Um, anyways, there were some fathom fig figures that were uh, released. Uh, double page spread from fathom, this was from issue 5. Page 21 and 22. So again, back to the... Uh, uh, yeah, this page would be... It would be 22-23. Alright, and then you get this little uh, stat here with um, little Mike Turner. Um, wondering if that was for Letterhead. So yeah, that's the end of that book there, guys. Um, yeah, hundreds of pages... Uh, if you can find this for an affordable price, highly recommend it. Uh, if you cannot, uh, then possibly seek out <clears throat> Michael Turner's sketchbook, The Marvelous Years, which is book three. Michael Turner, Aspen, The Heroic Years, which is book two. And... Michael Turner sketchbook Aspen the early years not the heroic years it's the early years which is book one and like I said all three of these volumes here uh, to my knowledge uh, make up this hardcover right here um, you know maybe I should do a comparison video but until then this is what you get so thanks for watching